Are you laughing at me? <laughs> what? Are you laughing at me? Yeah. Are you laughing at me? Yeah. You know that's like I can tell the teacher. <laughs> I can, okay. The principal. Why don't you go do that? The principal's gonna suspend you. I'm oh, fucked. I'm so fucked. Shit! I have to tell my fucking parents. You do have to tell your parents again. Bye again. Because the first time. You know the first time. No, what's the first time? The one before this time. What happened the first time? That time you killed that kid? Oh, shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, How duh. I, that? I didn't want to bring it up because, you know, it could be traumatic, but... Yeah, no, it's it's definitely, like, you know, a big, a big source of guilt for me. Yeah, I understand I'm that. Up that you'd bring it up if you're honest. Yeah, honestly. This is what you get for drunk driving at, like, eight years old, though. Did you think eight? Yeah, eight. Yeah, you were on your tricycle and you ran over that kid. That was so fucked up with me. Yeah, I don't know how you even managed to go, like, 30 kilometers on a tricycle. But I guess that's, yeah, like, no. the power of vodka. I only use my tricycle when I use it. Oh, yeah, that's good. Or, like, when you're on cat. Yeah, well, I mean, I always use it. Okay, yeah, you kind of have to. How are you going to balance if you're not on a tricycle? Alright. In this book, there's this dude, and he's like a scientist. He has like fancy psychology. You know who Sigmund Freud is? Yeah, I know who Freud is. Yeah, you know, like the mom, the mom banger? Yeah, I went to college. Yeah, you went to college? Yeah. You went to college? Yeah. Collage? Collage. A collage? Yeah, oh yes, you went to college. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. What'd you take? You take a, you take a, uh, what'd you take? I took bluthology. That was my major. Retard. And also being just a stupid bitch was my minor, but I was really good at it. That's what I was gonna like guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. You do it well. <laughs> I mean, you could do it badly, and that would be bad, you know? I can't decide if I'd rather be good at it or bad at it. it being bad at it would really suck. Think about yeah, it. Yeah, imagine trying to be a stupid bitch and not even being able to be a stupid bitch. Exactly. Exactly. See, I'm, I, I at least can follow through with my dreams and my goals. Exactly. See, it's good. It's good. Uh, Sigmund yeah, Freud was stupid. Smart. Sigmund Freud was super stupid, but he was also- Freud is pretty stupid. Yeah, he was like- He was like- I think kids, like, <laughs> like, want to suck on boobs. I feel like he was just True. projecting. Yeah, probably to some That's degree. The whole thing. I think he just wanted to fuck his mom. How do you not project those, the real question? I mean, I feel like projecting is- relatively unavoidable but don't don't write academic papers about how everyone is out there for them all. True. Yeah, I that's think that's fair. Thing. There's like a line where you like and that's probably the line. And you probably he said a good line. Mm -hmm. but yeah, so like Sigmund Freud so like Carl Jung is like way smarter than Sigmund Freud. And like when Sigmund Freud was doing psychoanalysis, Carl Jung was like helping him. And then like Carl Jung was well, like they were they were besties, and oh like, my God. but like Carl Jung was getting like super smart, and he was like writing all this stuff like, like fancy. He was like tying together like all the different kinds of religions and like the different psychologies behind like people and how they came up with all their mystic mystical weird stuff. And then Sigmund Freud was like, "You're offending me because I'm an enlightened atheist, and I only believe that the driving force behind humans is their want to put their mouths on nipples." And Carl Jung was like, nah, dude, everyone's got, like, spirit and stuff, and, like, they, like, want to- I can't to... tell if you're being for real about the nipples. Thing. Oh, yeah, well, it's Sigmund Freud. I mean, that, see, that's not what surprised me, but it's you telling me, and so, well, I don't always believe the things you say to me, because sometimes you lie to me. I never lie to you. You're a liar. <laughs> you just literally lied. Liar. <laughs> 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 darn my, my, my man my man Sigmund Freud was like Carl, Carl 
you dude you can't you can't chill here you can't chill here if you're gonna write books about religion and Carl Jung was like say less bro peace and he dipped and then Carl Jung like banned him from like the psycho psychoanalysis academy and stuff and like like hated him and, like talked down on him and tried to ruin his career but like, oh, that's like a big L. He's a huge L. And then Carl Jung went crazy because everyone was like hating him all over the world and he lost his job. And then like he started write he started writing this book, The Red Book, which is a detailing of all of his psychosis. But like it's not really psycho that's what the uninitiated people call it, like Sigmund Freud. They call it psychosis, but I call it awakening. He started to become super smart and super like open to his own existence. And then now he he did way more for psychology than Sigmund Freud ever did, but of course everyone knows Sigmund Freud, no one knows Jung. Because that's just how it I goes. Know Jung. Yeah, because of me. No, I knew him way before I ever met you. Cap. That's another lie no, that you tell you. No, literally it wasn't because I, I was really into MBTI stuff and he oh, true. like the, Big facts. Uh, Big see, facts. I don't, not everything I know is because of you, dumbass. You yeah, no duh, dummy. Duh, dumb, duh. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty solid uh, stutter right there. A little da 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 da. Okay, I'm gonna read to you now. Okay, so at this point, he was he like had like all these like super cool experiences where like he like would go into his brain. He'd like hear voices and like the voices would like become visions. Like, the voices kind of told him to, like, go inside of himself and stop being dumb and reading books. So only dumb people read books, right? And, um, yeah. so basically they're like, dude, just stop reading books and just, like, close your eyes for a little bit. And he started closing his eyes, and then, like, he'd have, like, these super cool visions where he'd be, like, all over the place, talking to, like, ancient people from, from, like, the Bible and stuff, and, like, other stuff. And they would, like, give him, like, these weird riddles, and then he'd have to solve them. And then when he saw them, all sorts of cool stuff happened, like he like exploded into flames and like saw like a giant snake bursting out of him that was like black and then it like fought this other giant white snake and then they like split into two and then like turned into like two white and black snakes and then it was, it was lots of cool stuff. And like at this point now, what's going... What? <laughs> 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 I just watch you open that. <laughs> Why are you being mean to me though? Why are you calling me mean words? The N word isn't a mean word. It's endearing. <laughs> it's it's like an honor as a white person to be called the N word. Oh wow, thank you. That's really sweet of you actually. It was really sweet. Oh, I love it. I love that. It's so, so kind. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to be no. read to? No, I'm autistic. That's okay. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I'm gonna fall asleep. I know. You're gonna get the best sleep. What kind oh, yeah. of great sleep? Don't don't you have like work or something? Yeah, I have a job because I'm 26. Old as potatoes. I'm literally such a boomer. It's fucked. Grandma, more than. I get hungover all this weekend though, or throw up. Cause I'm fucking bad. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I guess it was that. it was worth for me to yell at you nonstop for like <laughs> every single time I texted you. Yeah, and I only drug cried like three times. Oh, that's good. But I didn't have any meltdown. This is like a little like a little like soft. watery eye. Oh yeah. Tough my head to the side, dry my tears, and then finish my drink. Oh yeah. Kind of I know those, I know those. I have those every so often. You have a little silent cry to yourself where you just feel the empty loneliness that you feel will pervade your life for the entirety of it, and that you're just gonna die alone one day, and no one will remember you. And then Oh, see, that's not what I was thinking about, but I've had those guys, that's not fun. That's super fun, what are you talking about? You gotta learn to love it. Did I tell you about the thing with the the bartender? The TikTok bartender? Me? What happened? Did I tell you about that? What did he do? When we were out at the second bar we went to last night, 
the bartender came and took everyone's, well, it wasn't really a bartender, like, it was, you know, it was a, a waiter, I guess, because it's like a bar, but they have food. Mm. So they came and took the orders, and they missed me. They took everyone else's order but mine. They didn't fucking take it, so then I had to go walk up to the bar and order directly from the bartender, and I order my drink, I go sit down, and then they never bring it out to me, and I go over to her, and I'm like, hi, and she's like, yeah, I'm like, I never get my drink, and so then she gave me my drink. But by that time, I was drunk and sad, and so I had a little cry. Oh, that does sound cry-worthy. Do you want a hug? Yeah, I do. Can I have a hug? Yeah, you can have a hug. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh my cat came to join. Oh, he's getting out. Group hug. Oh, Group my God. Group hug. Yay. Literally Get score. I love my cat. He's my baby. What a legend. Mm, he might close my laptop. I'm going to try to make that not happen. <laughs> okay, try to make that not happen. Okay, I'm going to okay. read to you now, loser. No, Wait, you have I'm, You have I'm, things I'm, to say. Not, what do you have to yeah. say? I don't know. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> You're about to start a sentence, and I interrupted. Well, I forgot. I have dementia. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot that you have dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. No. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm going to throw the book at you. <laughs> I would deserve that. Yeah, it's a pretty heavy book. It's like 500 pages, but it's leather, so it's only going to like hurt a little bit. Oh, good. It'll feel I just like your dad's belt. Okay, The Magician, Chapter 21. After a long search, I found the small house in the country fronted by a large bed of tulips. And this is where Philemon, the magician, lives with his wife, Bossy. I like your sound effects, they're good. Philemon is one of those. Holy moly. <laughs> I'm not even drunk. I feel like I'm drunk. You are just retarded. I'm leftover drunk from this weekend. Facts. Philemon is one of those magicians who has not yet managed to banish old age, but who lives it with dignity, like you, old grandma. And his wife can only do the same. You're a little comment. Footnote 264. In Metamorphoses, Ovid tells the tale of Philemon and Baucis. Jupiter and Mercury wandered disguised as mortals in the hill country of Phygria. They searched for somewhere to rest, but were barred by a thousand homes. An old couple finally took them in. The couple had been married in their cottage in their youth, grew old together, and contentedly accepted their poverty. They prepared a meal- their what? Their poverty. Oh. Yeah, they, it'd be like that. It'd be like that for real. They prepared a meal for their guests. During the meal, the couple saw that the flagon automatically <laughs> refilled itself oh, as- wait, at the end. Yes? Guess what? What? I didn't vape once this weekend. Oh my god. Like the whole weekend. That's actually insane. Yeah, right? I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself. Because I was wasted the whole time. That's good. I forgot that nicotine existed. That's what I'm trying to do with Kratom and DXM. I'm just going to nod off the entirety of the withdrawals. (laughs) It's like sleep. Yeah, that sounds like a really good plan. You want to go out drinking together? I'm down. Wait, that's like what Jordan Peterson did with the, the, the benzodiazepines. He, like, traveled to Russia to get put in a medically induced coma for his benzo withdrawals, which is pretty See, it's based. kind of bullshit that he can get a medically induced coma because he's a fucking junkie, and I can't because I'm suicidal. Are you sure it's just because you didn't go to Russia? I guess I need to try. Okay. You should try that. That's because the American doctors are fucking powers. Yeah, they're a bunch of retarded slobs. They're paid for by Big Pharma. And Big Pharma does not want you to be in a coma unless you got, like, in a car accident and they're charging you for a hospital bed. Fucking cock. Literally. During the meal, the couple saw that the flagon... I don't know what a flagon is, but I'm guessing it's like a... It's like a thing that holds ale. Ah, you're so smart, thank you. It, it automatically refilled itself as soon as it was emptied. In honor of their guests, 
the couple offered to kill their sole goose. The goose took refuge with the goose. This is the one about, it's like the god or whatever, and then he gives them the gift, and then they just want to be trees. Is that the thing? Oh my god, yeah, you do know. Yeah, I, know, I love this story. It's actually really cute. <laughs> yeah, it says, The goose took refuge with the gods, who said that it should not be killed. Jupiter and Mercury then revealed themselves and told the couple that their neighborhood would be punished, but that they would be spared. They asked the couple to climb the mountain with them. When they reached the top, the couple saw that their country sur <laughs> surrounding their cottage had been flooded, and only- Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because you coughed like like it sounded like someone like got shot or something. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I never heard a cough that was so like- <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, no, I, I don't know. You could probably do like some good like death metal vocals. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. They asked the couple to climb the- oh wait, I already read that. Boop bit? Boop. <laughs> Don't repeat you bit. They asked the couple to climb the mountain with them. When they reached the top, the couple saw that the country surrounding their cottage had been flooded and only their cottage this remained. Fucked up story. It is pretty messed up, but I'm guessing- it How seems like they had it coming. Everybody? Well, probably for some reason. I don't know. Mean? Probably because they were mean. Bullies? Imagine if it was like a neighborhood of like bullies. Of what? Bullies and like and like like lawyers and stuff. Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> like the lawyers. <laughs> your first, the first place your brain goes. Yeah. What? Their I'm cottage. Gonna imagine it's full of police officers. You're gonna tell the police officer? No, I'm gonna imagine it's full of police officers. What's well the police officers? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. True, true. Pretty true. Yeah. Their cottage is transformed into a temple with marble columns and a gold roof. The gods asked what the couple would like, and Philemon re replied that they would like to be their priests and serve in their shrine, and also that they could die at the same time. Their wish was granted, and as they died, they transformed into trees side by side. Ta-da! That's so cute. It's so cute. Except for the part where everyone died. I don't know, that's pretty cute. I mean, it's <laughs> where everyone died, but yeah. I mean, like, it's cute death, though. <coughs> they just, like, got flooded. <coughs> <laughs> the footnote goes on, it talks about Goeth's Faust, and, uh,. I didn't read Faust, so I'm just gonna skip this part. I slept in a utility closet. I know. Did I send you a picture? You did. You posted it on was your I story. Drunk? I was drunk. Yeah, probably. Oh, I was wasted that whole weekend. Hashtag retard. I drinking at like 10 a.m. Yeah, me too, like, every day. We didn't have any non alcoholic beverages in the house, so I like, had to take my morning meds with me. Oh, that's healthy. Yeah, because I don't like tap water. Yeah, I do the same. When I take my morning meds. With beer? No, wine. What? Wine. Oh. What? <coughs> Their interests. My asthma's flaring up. I know. <laughs> Have you thought about, uh, like, I don't know, like putting some lotion down your throat or something? Just like deep throw the bottle? No, no, just like pour it in, like swallow, gargle maybe. I don't swallow. Coward. <laughs> True. <laughs> their interests seem to have become narrow, even childish. They water their bed of tulips and tell each other about the flowers that have newly appeared, and their days okay. fade into a Is pale. Is this a different story? No, it's just the end of oh, the foot. Same uh, story. And still going. It's the end of the footnote. Now it's back to Carl Jung meeting Philemon and Bossus again, except in his own dream. Yeah, they water their bed of tulips and tell each other about the flowers that have newly appeared, and their days fade into a pale, wavering chiaroscuro, lit up by the past, barely frightened of the darkness of what is to come. Why is Philemon a magician? Does he conjure up immortality for himself, a life beyond? He was probably only a magician by profession, and he now appears. Like 
Joe Biden? Yeah, yeah. Joe Biden. He was probably only a Joe Biden by profession, and he now appears to be a pension magician who has retired from service. His desirousness and creative drive have expired, and he now enjoys his well-earned rest. Desirable. He is very desirable. <laughs> you wanna fuck Joe Biden? Duh. <laughs> Dark Brandon. <laughs> Yeah, you're having a real good time imagining that, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has fucking erectile dysfunction. <laughs> like 90. <laughs> yeah, duh. That's the best part. It's like a wet noodle. Are you guys gonna pop Viagra's together? Nah, just uh, just a crack. With Hunter. Oh, smoking it? Yeah, with Hunter. Oh, I thought you would boot it, but Nah, dude. Shut up. You shut up, bitch. You're such a black person. What the heck is wrong with you? <laughs> His desire. Just do it, coward. Stop interrupting the darn story, you ADHD, no, no, autism, no. retard, asthma-having, retarded, <laughs> retard. But you're gonna try to silence a woman? That's kind of sexist of you. You're trying to silence me with your constant interruptions, you retard. Oh, you're actually gonna make me drop the hard R. Swear. Stop it. You stop it. You're gonna get me cancelled. Why? F for swearing. You're uncancelable. Your brand is built on being an edgelord. Facts. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty safe. I'm like that dude, Sam Hyde. <laughs> yeah. Who is he? I've heard of his name, I can't remember. He's, he's a retard that, like, just does lots of edgelord stuff. And I guess it's, like, slightly, like, intelligent edgelord stuff. I don't quite get it, but... No, that's how it be. It was his desiredness and creative drive have expired, and he <laughs> now enjoys his well-earned rest out of sheer incapacity. Like every old man who can do nothing else than plant tulips and water his little garden. Government, the official primo strategy guide, the clock for Western civilization medicine. The magical rod lies in a cupboard together with the sixth and seventh books of Moses and the wisdom of Hermes Trismegistus, Trismegistus, that's the word. Philemon has become old and somewhat feeble-minded. He still murmurs a few magical spells for the well-being of bewitched cattle in return for some petty cash or a gift for the kitchen, but it is uncertain if these spells are still correct and whether he understands their meaning. It is also clear that it hardly matters what he murmurs, as the cattle might also get well on their own. There goes Philemon in the garden, bent with a watering can in his shaking hand. Bassis stands at the kitchen window and looks at him calmly and impassively. She has already seen this image a thousand times, somewhat more infirm every time, feebler, seeing it a little less well every time since her eyesight gradually has become weaker. Hey, lol, like your lungs. <coughs> I stand at the garden gate. They have not noticed the stranger. Philemon, old magician, how are you? I call out to him. He does not hear me, seeming to be stone deaf. I follow him and take his arm. He turns. Hey. I have to pee. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back. In the meantime, some footnotes. The sixth and seventh books of Moses, i.e. in addition to the five contained in the Torah, were published in 1849 by Johann Schiebel, who claimed that they came from ancient Talmudic sources. This work is a compendium of Kabbalistic magical spells, which has been enduringly popular. Footnote on Hermes Trismegistus. The figure of Hermes Trismegistus was formed through the amalgamation of Hermes with the Egyptian god Toth. 
The Corpus Hermeticum, a, largely of, a collection of largely alchemical and magical texts dating from the early Christian era, but initially thought to have been much older, was ascribed to him. Uh, Philemon, old magician, how are you? I call out to him. He does not hear me, seeming to be stone deaf. I follow him and take his arm. He turns and greets me awkwardly and trembling. He has a white beard and thin white hair and a wrinkled face, and there appears to be something about this face. His eyes are gray and old, and something is in them. One would like to say, alive. I am well, stranger, he says, but what are you doing here? People tell me that you understand the black art. I am interested in that. Will you tell me about it? What should I tell you about? There is nothing to tell. Don't be ill-natured, old man. I want to learn. You are certainly more learned than I. What could I teach you? Do not be mean. I certainly don't intend to become your competitor. I'm just curious to, to know what you are up to and what magic you are performing. What do you want? In the past, I have helped people here and there who have been sick and disadvantaged. What exactly did you do? Well, I did it quite simply with sympathy. Old man, that word sounds comical and ambiguous. How so? It can mean that you helped people either by expressing compassion or by superstitious, sympathetic means. Well, surely it would have been both. And that's all there was to your magic. I know even more. What is it? Tell me. That is none of your business. You are impertinent and meddlesome. Please, don't take my curiosity badly. Recently I heard something about magic that awakened my interest in this bygone practice. And then I came to you because I heard that you understand the black art. If magic were still taught today at university, I would have studied it there. But the last college of magic was closed long ago. Today, no professor knows anything anymore about magic. So do not be sensitive and miserly, but tell me a bit about your art. Surely, you don't want to take your secrets with you to the grave, do you? Well, all you will do is laugh anyway, so why should I tell you anything? It would be better if everything were buried with me. It can always be rediscovered later. It will never be lost to humanity, since magic is reborn with each and every one of us. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you believe that magic real is really inborn in man? If I could, I would say, yes, of Can course it is. Me? Pardon? You muted me. Over my I fell into a box. Oh my god. Is the box okay? God. <laughs> you, you run over a kid, you run over a cat. What the heck is next? What is next? Tell me. <laughs> Alright, Carl Jung says, No, and this time I will not laugh because I have often wondered about the fact that all peoples in all times and in all places have the same magical customs. I have already thought along similar lines. What do you make of magic? To put it plainly, nothing or very little. It appears to me that magic is one of the vain tools of men inferior to nature. I can detect no other tangible meaning in magic. Your professors probably know just as much. Yes, but what do you know about it? I'd prefer not to say. Don't be so secretive, old man. Otherwise, I must assume that you know no more than I do. Take it as you please. Your answer suggests that you most definitely understand more about it than others. Comical fellow, how stubborn you are. But what I like about you is that your reason does not deter you. That's actually the case. Whenever I want to learn and understand something, I leave my so-called reason at home and give it whatever it is I am trying to understand the benefit of the doubt. I have learned this gradually, because nowadays the world of science is full of scary examples of the opposite. In which case you could do very well for yourself. I hope so. Now let us not stray from magic. Why are you so determined to learn more about magic if you claim that you have left your reason at home? Or would you not consider consistency part of reason? 
I do. I see, or rather, it seems as if you are quite an adept sophist who skillfully leads me around the house and back to the door. It seems that you, that way to you, because you judge everything from the standpoint of your intellect. If you forsake reason for a while, you will also give up consistency. That is a difficult test, but if I want to be adept at some point, I suppose I ought to submit to your request. All right, I'm listening. What do you want to hear? You're not going to draw me out. I'm simply waiting for whatever you are going to say. And what if I say nothing? Well, then I'll withdraw somewhat embarrassed and think that Philemon is at the very least a shrewd fox who definitely would have something to teach me. It's a gold Greek name. That's stupid. With this, my boy, you have learned something about magic. I will have to chew on this. I must admit that this is somewhat surprising. I had imagined magic as being somewhat different. Well, this shows you how little you understand about magic and how incorrect your notion of it is. If this should be the case, or that's how it is, then I must confess that I approached the problem completely incorrectly. I gather from what you are saying that these matters do not follow ordinary understanding, nor does magic. But you have not deterred me at all. On the contrary, I'm burning to hear even more. What I know up to now is essentially negative. With this, you have recognized a second main point. Above all, you must know that magic is the negative of what one can know. That too, my dear Philemon, is a piece of knowledge that is hard to digest and causes me no small pain. The negative of what one can know? I suppose you mean that it cannot be known, don't you? This exhausts my understanding. <laughs> How do you just like keep coughing louder and louder and louder? Oh, you're talking to me. Yep. Um, um, I don't know. Like I might die. That'd be cool. Oh, that's cool. That is Why the- Why do you hate me? Pardon? Why do you hate me? Oh, I don't hate you at all. Well, huh. you want me to die. I don't. But that's entirely plausible. And if it is plausible, why am I going to be sad? Being sad about things is dumb. <laughs> you wouldn't be sad if I died? Nah, man, I've been to way too many funerals for that nonsense. Wait, actually, you wouldn't be sad? Nah. Wait, really? Yeah, why would I be sad? Would you want me to be sad? I mean, I wouldn't want you to be, but... Exactly. So why would I be sad? Isn't, like, the greatest honor, then, to not be sad and to continue living my life to the fullest instead of just weeping over something that you wouldn't want me to weep about? If you died, I'd have a fucking breakdown. That's unfortunate. You probably shouldn't do that. You should just, like, enjoy yeah. your life and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So, you better not die, because I'm not, I'm not ready. Yeah, I honestly, I have no idea if I'm gonna die or not. My body's been, like, bugging out recently, and... I've just kind of like pretended it's happening, hoping that it's just like some like chemical oh, okay. nonsense breaking That's what my body. I've been doing, I'm fine, so I think I'll be fine. Yeah, I think I'll be fine too, to be honest. And if I'm not, I don't really care, because I'm just gonna, you know, flip out the other side as I already have literally 50 times in the last like three months. So, what do you do? Do you do? Your body to get stronger by making a deal with its own issues. Something like that. Yeah, it sounds It is. I had beer for breakfast tonight. That's good. I forget what I had for breakfast. Wine? Yep, yep. I'm so smart, see I know you say. I give up reading. <laughs> good, because <laughs> I was bored. I want to talk to you. It wasn't boring. You just can't pay attention. Yeah, I have crippling idiots, you know that. That's, n that's not even a thing. It's just called being retarded, not being willing to deal with the present moment. Don't th don't think you can fool me. The doctors used to put me on speed all the time, and I was fine. I must not cocaine. I love that. Do it then, coward. What? Do it then, coward. One more time. Do it then, coward. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. That was pretty sick. Yeah. Started so aggressively. I'm uploading. 
I'm gonna upload this whole conversation to my YouTube channel. Wait, are you recording? Yeah, I recorded the whole thing. Wait, are you for real? Yeah. Are you actually gonna upload it? Yeah. Super entertaining. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. What stupid shit did I say? I feel like I said a lot of stupid shit. Yeah, every single thing you said was dumb. <laughs> Except actually, no, you said some, you said a couple like actually like not dumb things this time. Like especially towards the start, it was pretty good. But like, as you became more and more desperate for my attention and I was not giving it to you, the level of stupidity continued to just go up and up. <laughs> if you want my attention, you should say smart stuff. I love smart things. Molecules. Yes! Oh my god, please continue. Please, please, please. Dipole, dipole bond. Oh my god. Electron. <laughs> please, my pants. What? My pants, please. Relax. <laughs> your pants. My pants, they're coming off. What's happening to your pants, I guess? They're coming off. Oh. I, I can't handle this, like, level of... You're taking your pants off? No, no, they're coming off on their own. It's magic. Yeah. You, you never heard of gravity? No, I don't know what that is. What are you? Gay? Yeah, I am. I always knew you were gay. You're a Why do you hate gay people? Mm, something to do with uh, 